this is going to be, we have scheduled two hours. I don't know how long it will be, but I hope you, you got some energy. Um, so let's get started. I'm Jorge Izquierdo, I'm the CTO at Argon One, which is a company that basically builds infrastructure for the Argon project. And this workshop is also worked on by Alice Santander, which is a, a colleague at Argon One that works on the SDK team. Um, from tomorrow, that Argon One will be officially taken on the Argon SDK uh, as well. So, how does this work? Uh, oh, oh. oh boy, there's a huge lag. Okay, here we go. So this is my beautiful computer. Uh, I have it back home uh, because uh, this is the best laptop that Apple has ever made. It's a 2015 15 inch uh, computer, but recently people have been discovering People have been discovering that they burn, when, especially when you take them on airplanes. So a couple of days before coming here, my airline told me that I couldn't travel with my MacBook Pro. So I've been traveling and working off an iPad. So this is like not ideal, and this is the context in which I had to prepare this workshop. But hopefully, I had the help from my colleagues um, back from the other side of the world. Uh, this is a quote that I really like from another presentation, but I think it, it, it really. It really signals quite well like our, um, our philosophy to build in software at Argon and specifically at Argon One. Uh, we're, not, um, we're not scared of going down the stack or building whatever we have to build. To, we really care about our software, we really care about what our users can do with our software, and if we have to build an SDK, an operating system on Ethereum, or even a blockchain, like we will do it. Uh, we'll just do whatever uh, needs to be done. Uh, and today we're going to be reviewing a lot of these things that, that we've built uh, for, especially for people to build applications and customize their DAOs. Some requirements if you want to do the fun, hands-on part of the workshop later, so you can get started if you don't have any of, of this. Uh, some JavaScript and Solidity knowledge is kind of necessary and operating with Truffle. You probably cannot get that in an hour, but it's going to be fine anyway. Um, you also need, will need like a Unix-like Unix -like shell. Uh, Mac OS or Linux is better, but on Windows, if you're down to do some hacks, um, you can make it work. You need Node JS V8 or V10. If you have the latest V12, that's not gonna work. Uh, so if you wanna check, just do so node test version. Uh, you also probably need the Argon CLI, and for that, it's NPM install test as global Argon CLI. Uh, all this, this takes a little bit of time, and then frame. Uh, so we're two point X. I will like repeat this one when we actually need it. Uh, but if you want to get started, uh, you can get one. Uh, you also need to clone and install this GitHub repo. If you want to get started with this, you can do it. I will have it later when when we actually need it. So some background on what we have we want to do. Uh, these are like the Argon templates. This is the the user interface part of our templates. Uh, there's a lot of complexity. And, uh, and our one down, but we and there's a lot of customization that you can do. You basically can do anything that you want, but this is like the level of abstraction that we present it to users, uh, and it's through templates. Uh, so these are like when you go to app the dark on the door, these are like the different options of like kind of like down in a box that like, pre-configured with like reasonable settings to get them uh, ready uh, very easily. And then each of these templates is like fundamentally different how the DAO gets configured, which is have to go in. But like we abstract it all away behind templates, and then we provide like a reasonable user interface uh, behind the templates. We let you let users know what applications we're going to be installing. Uh, if there are some options, for example, agent is optional, but you click a box uh, and then you get agent. And then after this, you have like all the parameterization that users can do. Um, and, we try to hide a lot of this complexity, um, but there, there's actually quite a bit, quite a few things uh, behind this. I don't think you can read this because the contrast is not great. Uh, but uh, we kind of call it the Aragon Lego pyramid. Uh, so at the at the top we have the core, which we call Aragon OS, and this simply is like a very small piece of code that is mostly just the the interfaces and the building blocks to do everything else. Um, this is like with the Lego metaphor, this is kind of like the idea of that circle on top that is what, what different bricks used to um, used to connect to one another. So that would be our own. It's like, how are we doing this so everything can come together? Uh, then at the, 
Next layer, we have the apps. Uh, and these are apps that follow the same interface. They use like, some of the principles from Urban OS uh, to make things simpler. But then they feel like they do something very specific, akin to like a Lego block that is like, uh, like this wide and this, uh, this size. Uh, we like apps do like one function and they do it really well. For example, the voting, the voting app, it just has the minimum amount of stuff that it needs to do and then it has interfaces so you can put other apps like close to it and kind of change its functionality. We also like to talk about this like as Unix programs. Um, you have like small programs that do one thing, they do it very well. And then if you want to do more complex things, you can like pipe up the output of a program to the input of another one. Um, and with that you can build complex uh, complex workflows without needing to write any any extra software. Um, so that's kind of the idea of apps, very like, purposely built uh, building blocks that you can then combine in different ways. And at the bottom of the pyramid is like the templates. Uh, and this is how you get like all the pieces, you get all the apps that you want, you connect them in different ways, um, and then that's how you get the organization that you want. Uh, in the Lego metaphor, this would be like the instructions, this would be like the Star Wars, Lego edition, whatever, like that's what it tells you, okay, we're gonna take all these pieces that you could be using to build like, I don't know, like a SpongeBob, Lego, whatever, but like if you use them this particular way, we're gonna teach you how to build like um, um, a Star Wars, whatever. Uh, and the good thing is that you don't need to build it every time. So uh, once you build a template, people can reuse that template and build that DAO any amount of times. And you can even create a user interface and have it in the in the Arbon client. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like a rough idea of the forwarding concept in, in Arbon OS. It's kind of like the data flow or the calls flow um, of how like we do like complex complex permissioning. Uh, on our own OS, uh, rather than having, like for example, you have a bold contract that holds the assets of the DAO, rather than having that bold contract know about votes or governance or whatever, it just knows that it, it relies on an access control list uh, that lives at the our own OS level, and then uh, when voting, when a vote is approved and it, it wants to do something through a vote, you just check that it's the voting app instance that it's actually having that intent. Uh, that way we can like, isolate the logic of, of, of all of these components and governance ends up being like just a very simple check of an access control list. Uh, and then we have the interfaces to make this um, simpler, which we call like uh, transaction pathing or forwarding uh, more generally. Um, there's a good intro to our OS in hack.dirwan.org. That is our uh, developer website. Um, and you have also a QR code if you want to go there. Uh, I wouldn't go very, very deep on our OS, which it would be like another two-hour workshop. Um, this is like an important concept, like how logic gets isolated, so we don't have to like everything has to know about governance and everything. So once this is built, like, building apps is like really simple. It's like building a basic utility contract, inheriting from another contract that does a lot of a lot of magic uh, behind the scenes, so people don't have to worry about it. Um, kind of. Shifting the topic and going a little bit up the stack, um, there's this app uh, called Agent that is, is taking a lot of, I mean, it's growing a lot in terms of, of usage. Um, Agent is an app that allows an Aragon, an Aragon DAO to interact with any other Ethereum protocol, contract, governor protocol. Agent is a fancy way of saying this allows an Aragon DAO to do an arbitrary contract call, uh, but we've put a lot of fancy stuff on top to make it super convenient to use and super super useful. So um, through Agent, once Agent is installed in an organization, we can do something that we call Argon Smart Accounts. Um, a Smart Account is basically an Agent instance that you run in your organization, and then you have a governance process for deciding uh, when you can execute something for an Agent. It can be through a boat, it can be like a multi sig type scheme in which you have like three keys, someone to decide the agent that's something. It can be something as simple as, okay, anyone in this group can do calls from here to like publish packages or whatnot. Um, so we also have this, um, this signing provider uh, called Frame, uh, which is like MetaMask, but, but better because it doesn't live in your browser, it actually lives in your operating system. It's an Electron app, uh, but it's really cool. Um, and also it has the ability to perform actions on behalf of your DAO. So if you see the agent um, 
like when we're trying to sign a message like to perform something on compound, uh, you can see that the agent like frame pops up and tells you that that's an error on account. Uh, and what that allows you to do is when you are you can browse Web3 pretending that you're your DAO, and then at the moment of signing, instead of sending the transaction directly, it will go and send uh, a vote in your organization or do whatever it needs to do uh, to get that done. So it's it's actually pretty neat. You have that URL that there are on the dark stats I need to go more in depth. And it's like really easy to install. You just have to install a little browser extension to connect it to Web3, and then you need uh, like the desktop application, in that case, I need the, the banner for mine. So, kind of through this small intro, um, we can get into the topic uh, for today, uh, which is we picked a protocol because there was some beef about compound finance not being very decentralized. Uh, there's like this article that is really good, I really recommend reading that. Uh, and compound finance is basically a centralized protocol that allows people to lend and borrow ETH or other crypto assets in a fully collateralized way. Uh, but they have like some points in the protocol that they need to be prioritized to set the interest rates or, or whatever. I actually don't know what, what the admin function uh, does exactly, but it's, it's like a very important admin function. Uh, Compound right now, as of today, is holding $111 million worth of ETH. Uh, so it's like a pretty pretty big deal, and I don't know if they hold more in not ETH. Uh, so it's like pretty, it's pretty big. So it's, if something happened there, it would be really bad for the entire ecosystem. We're talking about a hack uh, that would be the size, almost the size of the DAO hack, and we all know how that went. Um, these are the powers from that blog post I was talking about. These are the powers that the admin has. Um, it's pretty bad, um, especially like he can block um, new maintain, he can block transfers, and he can do this, this great thing right here that he can drain all the underlying assets so the owner can take the money and run with it. And that's not good. Um, so there's also the problem that this is controlled by an externally owned account or EOA, as the one is screaming. Uh, so these are the addresses that control Compound. They're not multi sigs they're not DAOs, they're like um, private keys that someone holds. Uh, as far as we know, it could be the CEO's MetaMask account. Uh, so that's problematic uh, for sure. Uh, they, when this article got published, they said that they had like a very secure signing process and, and so on. But as as you're using Compound, you don't really know if they can be hacked. You don't have any guarantees that the CEO won't be kidnapped or like their family would be kidnapped um, and be like, okay, send this transaction, and then their users 111 million dollars could be gone uh, because there's no process in place to avoid that. Whoever holds that privately can take more than 100 million dollars. So. This is like the gravity of the problems, and we're kind of seeing this with other protocols. So the question is, is, is Compound custodial? And I mean, I answer like an absolute yes. Uh, it's a, it runs with smart contract. Um, it has a centralized front end, which that's like another, another array of very big problems. But even if it's a smart contract, if there's someone that can take all the money and run, even if they're totally not incentivized to do so, like, the Compound CEO is probably the least incentivized person in the world to fuck up with Compound, but it can happen. Uh, he can lose their key, uh, the families can be kidnapped. It, it wouldn't be like when that much money is at stake. Like everything is possible, really. So, yeah, that's the question is Compound custodial is like DeFi, even DeFi, or is it CeFi? Um, and I argue it's CeFi. So, but we can help. We don't have to be uh, so negative about it, and it's actually not that not that hard uh, to help people like like Compound to get their shit together. Uh, and we're happy to help. That's what we're here for. Um, so, getting into the agenda for the workshop. Uh, first, we're gonna do like a little tour of agent, and we're gonna be um, laying beneath um, using the DAO. So this is. Uh, kind of to solve the experience of how to use Argon smart accounts. Uh, later, we're going to try to govern a local compound instance from an Argon DAO. This is a bit more, more involved. We're going to have to deploy a compound, and I still haven't gotten so easy to install on my computer, so it's going to be even, even more fun. It's going to be very real. Uh, and then, third, uh, we're going to build a template to add a time delay for the governance 
uh, of compound. This is like a little bit of a stretch goal, um, and this would be like life coding at that point uh, because we don't have that yet. Um, so let's get started. Um, for using compound on behalf of Narrow DAO, if you want to follow, those are all the things that you need. You need frame, you need ring you need oh, you need ring of ETH and you need to create an Argon DAO. Uh, why does this work? And you need any Okay, yeah. This is definitely trolling me. Okay, yeah, it's it's good. After after installing frame, can you see this going well? So as, after installing frame, which I already did it, I already installed the the app. Uh, we can go ahead and, and start a frame. Uh, so I told you that the frame is running at the, at the OS level. So, Apple thinks frame is malware. This is a, this is definitely a new one. How fun every day is on the Ethereum system. If you need a version of Frame that's not the latest one, you can go here to get help. can start seeing the process of that we will follow for the twelve year of uh, So 
so you can go to Wiki right on the board. Um, and there's these um, these five example organizations that if you just want to like take a look at the at the different organizations that, that we have. Uh, these are like very good examples of different types of organizations with different governance processes. Um, it's like pretty, pretty interesting. You can also start them so that you have them in your spark list. Um, and you can do both like create an organization, just complain that I don't have any free provider, so I'm getting frame ready, or you can open an existing organization. Um, of course, like, because this is all running on Ethereum, everything is um, everything's public, uh, so you can see anyone's organization. You could go, for example, to on the main end, uh, slash one, uh, and here you can see our one ones uh, finances, which is my like the company that uh, Luis and I run. Uh, there's a little trick if you wanted to go fast, you can enter that's fast, and this would use if you're a instead of other nodes. Uh, so I'm gonna try to frame again. Never seen this before. I've been mean, using a man for close to ten years. This is this framed. So don't, don't update Mac OS. This is like basic stuff. Uh, always wait for the dot one or dot two version. Like dot zero is is garbage, um, and really don't know what is what is going on. So yeah, it's a good trick if you want to be productive. Never. This is great. Oh, we can remove the quarantine. I do want to think about this. Okay. I'm going to give it like two more minutes, otherwise, I'm just going to jump to the next version part of the sort of Yeah, we're definitely going to jump uh, to that part of the tutorial. Really want to thank Apple for their support. Uh, so let's jump into how to build our own tokens. Uh, we'll go over the, the, 
the anatomy of a, of a template. So if you want to follow this, uh, there's this repo on GitHub called uh, DAW templates. Um, and DAW templates, would, they're basically all the templates that when, whenever you open um, whenever you open a Greenkeepy, um, like the Greenkeepy on our one, uh, this is the this is the templates. This is the code for the templates. And we'll go over the some of the templates that, that we can use, uh, and we will later on uh, just like modify modify the, the template uh, to to change the code. So I'm gonna stop that. So basically, all the templates that we saw before in the presentation, um, they are backed by, by actual actual Solidity code. Um, and with uh, with the set of templates, we wanted to min basically minimize uh, the amount of coding that you need to do for um, for building your organizations. And it's for the most part, it's just uh, this configuration work. Um, so um, what I'm going to do now is so I'm going to go to my Word directory workshop. And we're going to clone uh, DAW templates. Uh, and later we're, we're going to see the, the anatomy of like what what really, uh, like the amount of code that is really powering uh, an Argon organization. Uh, so, first I want to show you the started. Alive, this is great. Okay, um, yeah, I'm gonna continue down this path, uh, but we will go back to frame later. Um, okay, don't copy my words. Oh. Please let me be secure. Let me do my thing. Oh, no. Okay, yeah, let's, let's go into the templates. Um, this has been a, a lot of Fun. This is this is how every day is. Uh, this is like no bullshit. Um, everything breaking and just like plowing through it. Um, okay, so this is the, the templates, uh, the DAO templates uh, repo, um, and this is um, this is what we what is called like a mono repo. Uh, so we have some of the some of the templates uh, are like building on top of this template that we call insert. Uh, there's this contracts based on it. And this is here is where we do all the all the heavy lifting is actually done here. Uh, yeah, this is not having my machine, it's also playing in hard mode right now. Uh, but um, here the, the base template, uh, you can see all the like all the setup that, that we do. And, and the idea with the base template is whenever you want to build a template, uh, instead of like writing it from scratch, uh, you can just inherit from uh, from from this template and what it will allow you to do is like here's like everything everything complicated, everything internal, but then it exposes like some fancy functions like create demo. Uh, so if you're building a template, all the setup that needs to happen for Creating a DAO that uses a factory and then it sets up the, the basic term permissions for the template. Like you don't have to do anything else to just go there and call create DAO and you will get the in return uh, the address of the DAO and the So it's like very, very convenient uh, to just like use this. Uh, we already did like all of the all of these heavy lifts, you know, like lower level work, uh, and you can just take this. Uh, and then we have like all the also convenience functions for creating permissions. Uh, creating permissions for the template, for the internal things, removing permissions because after after the template does its thing, the template during the setup phase has a lot of permissions. It has almost like a lot of power over the DAO. So when we're done, even though the template will not be able to do anything, like we want to clean up and leave everything everything in a, in a good place uh, after after we do that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of functions, and then like there's like convenience functions to install like default apps. For example, here is the, the uh, convenience function to install agent as a default app, as a non-default app. 
to create the permissions that are important that the that the agent has. Uh, then like same with both. Like we have like all of the default types that most templates will probably add. Uh, we have like this like very easy, uh, very easy methods that you can just use uh, by inheriting from uh, from the base template. Um, and now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a random template, uh, for example, the company template, um, and kind of like so the the anatomy of it. So as we're saying, uh, we of course uh, inherit from the base template, and then this thing, there's this thing called token cache. Uh, that we use in some of the templates you can run in just one transaction. So in one transaction, there's a, a crazy amount of stuff happening, but some of them, they're too weak. Uh, so we need to split them in multiple transactions. And this token cache, uh, when we split it, we try to do like all the setup work. So for example, when, when every DAO is deployed, or any DAO that needs a token, uh, we deploy a token, uh, and that takes like around like 2 million pass. Uh, so in templates, uh, we need like more than the block uh, worth of gas, but not, not too much. Then we just deploy a template, we a token, we cache it, and then when you do the second transaction, we're that token. Or, okay. Sorry for that. Uh, we already have the token for you, so you can like, just do it in, in less steps. But this is like a, uh, and, like a minor issue. Then we set up permissions. Uh, these are like the errors, sorry, um, that in order, like if something fails, so we're able to easily debug it um, and provide it like this. Then we have like some constants that the template uses. Um, and then by inheriting from from the, from base template, that that's all the setup for the template. We actually don't really need to do a lot of a lot of setup here. Like we just do some checks. Uh, then the error on ID registry is, is valid. Just checking. If these are contracts for the most part. Um, and then we have the new instance. Uh, the new instance method uh, creates both the like, new token and new instance creates both the token in this case and the instance. Uh, it gets a bunch of prompts, uh, which are token name for the organization token, the symbol, uh, the ID, which will be the name that the organization will be, you will be able to find uh, your organization through that, through that name. Uh, then we have the token holders, the states, the voting settings, like, these are like uh, specific params for a DAO, but these are parameters that you want users to parameterize. Uh, so you create the template for the kind of for the, the specific type of organization, but then you allow for users to parameterize, for example, how long do both take or who is getting tokens uh, when, when do you deploy the organization. So these are meant to be inputted from the front end, uh, but there's a lot of a lot of decisions that the specific template will be making on the users they have, uh, because those are like template level settings that if you want to change, you will need to come here uh, to the code, uh, modify these constants, uh, and then redeploy the template, which is something that we don't encourage users to do. So it's just easier to create templates that can solve for the user's potential parameterization needs. Uh, and this uh, that's two very simple things. First, it creates a token, and then it creates a new instance, uh, which are like two different functions. New token, as we we're talking, this creates a token using the base templates, uh, new token, uh, like utility, then it caches it, so only message sender can use that token for their DAO. This is so we don't have people um, stealing other people's tokens. So, so it's stealing, but, but they would be paying for their guys, and so that would be, wouldn't be nice. Um, and then we return it. In new instance, this is where the interesting stuff happens. Um, first, we validate that the ID, like, this is like, basically the name of the DAO, uh, so this ID would be something like um, type A, uh, which would get us, uh, when the DAO is deployed, uh, the DAO would get an ENS name, um, yeah. the DAO would get an ENS name that would be like type A dot ID. Dot ETH. Uh, and this is a full on ENS name, and with this you can with this name you can find the DAO's um, the DAO's kernel and like, display the DAO uh, from just from the name type A or the name type A or ID to ETH. Um, so this is what we're doing here, and then we do some checking for parameters to make sure that the the parameters that the user set are reasonable and that nothing is going to break. Uh, but this is like uh, very like normal stuff, like we just take, uh, 
yeah, you basically just stay with some of these parameters and make sanity check that the links are right, uh, that the holders is not zero, so the organization will be controlled by anyone. Uh, this is like very, 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 very simple stuff. Um, then using the create down method that we talked about, uh, that is on base template, we don't need to worry about, as template developers, we don't need to worry about all the complexity behind creating a DAO. We do create DAO, and this returns a kernel, which is the, like, the core contract of the DAO, uh, which we call DAO everywhere else. And then the ACL, which is the access control list for permissions in the in organization. Um, and then, again, using the, using the base template, uh, we do set up apps, uh, because these are the default apps that you install in most organizations. So you just go ahead and say, okay, install me apps on this DAO uh, with this ACL and these holders, the states that everyone's getting, voting settings, finance period, and whether we're going to be using agent, which is, as we said, it's like an option that people can now uh, use and we are even afraid from the, from the, from the front end. Uh, then we create payment manager permissions, this is something related to voting, um, and then we transfer the root permissions uh, from the template uh, to whoever needs to have those permissions in the DAO, and then we finalize it. We here we do the cleanup, and there's like a lot of a lot a lot of cleanup uh, that goes on uh, when this happens, and then we do register uh, the RMIT. And now to kind of so what is what is going on when you execute that template on Ethereum? I'm gonna go get the the address of this template uh, live on Ethereum mainnet. It can be found in our in our deployments repo, so this is the deployment something. Uh, and here we can go and find the company template that is here. This is the address that it's at, so we can go to the search plan. Address. Address. And we can see here the when when this contract receives calls, is because someone is deploying a, a DAO with this with this template. Um, and we can see the full transaction, see that this is probably the, oh no, this is a, this is creating a full DAO. Uh, so you can see the gas price is great right now. So if you want to deploy DAOs, I would encourage doing it right now. It's like executing all that code and creating a full DAO, which is a company, to this person, $1.40. Uh, and there's like a lot of stuff going on in the background. Like you can see like, if you're an Ethereum developer, there's like 87 logs in one transaction. That's, that's a lot of logs. But yeah, it did everything. It's, we deployed the token, it set, it started setting up all the apps, install stuff, like other contracts with other stuff. Uh, so there's there's a lot that, that goes on. Uh, but uh, by doing it with a template, we can do all of that. Uh, these 87 event logs, this could have been like 87 different transactions if we if we were doing everything externally one by one. Uh, but by doing it with a template, we can do it in one just one transaction and spend uh, just like a dollar on, on deploying like a pretty a pretty complex uh, organization and there's a bunch of internal calls uh, that go on here and we actually can go ahead and see this now I, I'm not sure what the name of this now is but we can try to figure it out Should be one of the last events. Can subdomain sub Okay, this are this is the DAO address from here. And we can now go to the Arlon Arlon client and load up that particular DAO that, that someone created with our with our template. So just by sending that transaction uh, to, to the template, it, it has created this Argon DAO for, for this person, and it creates like, all of these apps. Uh, it sets it up with the correct permissions that were, were set in the, in the template, so we can here we can audit the DAO and be sure that the permissions are correctly set. If the permissions are wrong, even if one permission is wrong, if you're like, okay, so system permissions, kernel, uh, manatons, if you don't see that this is done by voting and therefore by governance. This is like really, really dangerous because this allows anyone to upgrade apps in your organization to make a smart contract upgrade. If this is like just like 
you go here and you to say, okay, you know, kernel, uh, I want to give this permission to any account, so anyone in Ethereum could do it. To my NetApp, say, if you do this, then anyone in Ethereum could break your organization. So this is an example of how sensitive permissions are, and that people should really be careful with uh, them, and then just review the permissions. So for anything critical, um, it should be both assigned to voting or like the governance process of the organization, and also, um, be managed by voting because the manager of a permission can revoke the permission and grant it to someone else. So this is a quite dangerous stuff, and you should so be careful to, with the state of the of the permissions. But this is a fully fledged um, organization that someone created uh, using the using the template that, that we were just reviewing. And in this case, there's only a token holder that has a hundred thousand head style tokens. Um, I have no idea what it is, uh, but this is their, their organization, they, they use the template and because the template was already created, they just had to go to main it, the dark on the door, and like follow up a few buttons, input that this guy was going to be the sole token holder and would hold 100,000 tokens. Um, but you could have done it differently, but the, the point being that thanks to templates, uh, in, in like, as you can see, it's like, it's fairly simple Solidity code. Uh, once all the heavy lifting has been done, uh, and you can totally change how how the organization is going to is going to work. And we can we could go here and like modify permissions or like create both permissions. And here we say, okay, this is voting the one that is going to be getting this permission. But if you could be like, okay, this is not going to be voting. This is going to be a dead permission, uh, and no one can do this. Uh, then no one would be able to get money uh, out of here. Uh, so it's like quite a powerful tool uh, to really design the, uh, the organization design uh, by code kind of instead of lawyers and paper. Uh, so it is kind of like an, an overview of one of the most most used uh, templates. Uh, as I was saying, this is the once you're, you've read uh, a couple of templates, you will see that it's really really easy to to write your own. Um, and if we have time at the end, that we can maybe do like some. Some like coding, uh, but as I was saying, this is all live on our own um, DAO templates. Uh, and here you can like read the examples of like all of the templates that, that we've built. Uh, that right now everything that's here you can use it for your own client. Uh, but if you have an idea for a template, you can just create it. And if you want to use it just once, you can use it once. And if it's something that you believe that other people may want to use, you can create a pull request in the Argo client and we can add it and any Argo user will be able to, to use your template. Um, so now I'm going to shift back to what I was actually doing if frame is working. Um, so I really wanna, want to show you frame. Uh, so as I was saying, this is a, a better alternative to MetaMask. Um, we've uh, given a grant to this team and they're, they're amazing. Um, and you can have three types of accounts. Uh, the first one is you can have a hot account, which is like what MetaMask has. Is the, the private key lives in your computer, and you need to be careful of where this is being stored. This is not very secure, even though frame accounts are encrypted by a password. Um, it's already secure. You can also use a hardware wallet. It has native support for both Nigeria and Trezor, uh, which is how we recommend interacting with Argon DAOs if you're doing anything serious. And you can also use um, our, our own smart accounts, uh, which are like the agent, uh, like you will use your agent. So, but for this, um, I'm just gonna add a random, okay, a random account. Oh, I need to enter a private key. So, we're gonna share a private key. Please don't steal all the ETH. Private key generator through. This is like a really cool tool because you can say that you want your address to start with dead and then it will generate an address that starts with dead. This generated. Maybe not. Okay. So please don't steal this private key. Um, then we can just enter like a private key that we were already using for something else and then give it um, like a random, a random password. I 
I really have something against when a computer tells me that I need to use like a more simple password. If you develop software, never do this. Let people use passwords as insecure as they want. Maybe let them know that. Please. Okay, so. Random password generator. So this is a different account that I trying to prepare. Okay, we need another account. This is the So, uh, now, what we need to do if we want some recovery ETH, uh, we need to get re ETH from the from the set. Uh, this is basically a for the testnet testnet ETH. Uh, this gives you ETH for free uh, because this is not real real ETH. Um, so whenever we get our address here, I don't know when that's gonna happen. Okay, so this is the address that we control. Uh, what um, 
this facet is going to ask you is that you please you have to tweet something or put it on other social media uh, to in order to get uh, in order to get ETH. Uh, but then you now go back to give it the tweet and you ask him give me ETH. And it tells you we accepted this and now you can go ahead and delete the tweet because you're not going to be advertising right random addresses. But now this eventually you should receive ETH. Oh no, this was made in. Okay, this is something really bad from from Frame, which I hate. Which is it has like different accounts for for mainnet and and testnet. There's like absolutely no reason to do that. But we can enter the private key here, and we should be getting the exact same account. Otherwise, this is going to be sad. Okay, so this will eventually work. Um, but yeah, the idea is you get your, your ETH um, to Wikipedia and now with this we can interact with Ethereum from, from Frame. So whenever this does its thing, we should have the address here. Okay, so we're just going to let it do its thing. It shouldn't be that complicated, but um, it's what it is. Um, so, coming back to the agenda, uh, what you're going to need if you want to follow this uh, completely is yeah, uh, frame 0.x, 0.2.x. Uh, we need to reconvene ETH, which we already have, uh, and the moment that we get our, our ETH uh, from Rekabi, we can go ahead and we now have ETH. Uh, we have an account that we know we know the password for. So with this, we can start using our own uh, like frame from our own. So we're gonna refresh this. We're gonna whoa, human metamask. So now by clicking on the, the you can see that Argon Rinkv is trying to connect to you. Uh, you improve this to a log here. Um, and now it detects that we are connected to Rinkv. So we're gonna create a, an organization using the templates that we we're talking about. This is new fundraising template that I'm not gonna talk about it today, but this is a, we released this last Friday. Or two Fridays ago, uh, and this is great. Uh, this will allow you to find ways for your project directly from Argo. You can set it up in 10 minutes. Uh, so it's very exciting, but not for today. Um, so uh, we're going to go ahead and just set up a company, which is a template that we know about, and it's very important that we check that we actually want an agent uh, because it's what, what we're going to use. Uh, I'm just going to call it Type A. This is the Argo ID that I was talking about before. I'm going to make this a bit bigger, put it in tablet mode. Um, and now these are the options that our template exposes. This is like, okay, what, what's the voting support? Uh, so this is, like right now, it's like a simple majority vote. If more people vote yes, then people vote no, then the vote will pass. Uh, and if you're confused about anything, you can click here and we'll tell you what the parameter is. Uh, minimum approval, this is a fancy way of calling it quorum with other problems that normal quorum has. So this is like, of the absolute number of Token holders, how many need to vote yes for it to pass? So it doesn't matter if like, you have like 100% support, uh, but if at least 30% of the token holders don't vote yes, it won't pass. Even if everyone that shows up for the vote uh, votes yes. Uh, so we're going to set this to like 52, and we're going to remove the quorum because we don't need it and make the votes like, really quick, uh, just 15 minutes. Um, the thing is that if the vote uh, gets to a point that it can it can be approved um, at that point, um, it becomes even if the vote has an ended, we allow instant um, instant execution. So this is going to be the Taipei token, ICO soon. 
TSA, uh, then addresses, we're going to set my own address as the token holder here, and we're going to give us a balance of 100 tokens. Uh, you could add like more token holders here, uh, that's fine. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use like, a dictatorial DAO, this is going to be easier. And now we get like review information about the DAO. It's a, it's a template, um, the, the, the template's company, the name of the DAO will be type A. Uh, and then voting, we set that with 52% support, 20% approval, and 15 minutes voting. And we're going to set up the type A token uh, with 100 for, for my account. So with this, you just go and click launch organization, and then Frank will pop up telling you, okay, do you want to sign? You sign it, and uh, it's um, So now, when the transaction is made on Rikibi, we will uh, get on down, and we will be able to set it up, set up the Arbon Smart account uh, on Frank. So we will no longer be using this like, hot account that, that we have here, um, for Rink account, uh, but we will be able to use, use it, the, use the Arbon Smart account. And this is how it's going to join that I just did that. Uh, but we should be able to go to type A as soon as the organization is happening. And everything that, that we're doing, like of course you can also follow it on, on Etherscan because it's all it's all happening there. Um, so here we can see our transaction that still has a new mind. Okay. This went mine, which means that if we refresh, uh, we should see the organization that we just created. Um, okay, here we go. And here we have like all the apps that we just installed. This is exactly the same as the Oricon domain name that we just saw, like only one token holder with 100 IP tokens. Uh, but the interesting part is that we have agent. Um, and with agent, we can now uh, add an arbitrary account. Uh, there's like a front end for agent that's coming soon that you will be able to see all the actions that, that you've done, but we still don't have that. Uh, but now, um, running this is as easy as like this you go to frame, uh, we get the password uh, for my account, and then you unlock this here, and then you can go to add an Argon, Argon account and the only thing that you have to do is tell it what the name of your DAO is. In my case, it's type it. um, And then you click next. And you tell who is the account that you're going to be used to control that. And just like, what's the account that's going to send transactions to create bots and so on? And in this case, it's the only account that we have here. And it was successful. And now we have two, two accounts. Uh, and we can use both accounts. We can use like either this account that I have the private key for, or we can use this type A DAO account, uh, which is an account that I actually don't control. But uh, if I want to do anything to that, to that account, with that account, it will actually need to create a vote. Uh, so with this, we're going to go ahead and, well, first we're going to need some ETH on the account if we're going to, if we're going to basically provide ETH on Compound, uh, it's basically what we're going to do. Uh, but another interesting thing is that with this, uh, you can have a DAO create another DAO, uh, which is actually you get down the DAO rabbit hole. Um, so we approve it. We're now using Web3 as if we were a DAO. So now that we went to uh, Wikimedia.org to create a new DAO, it, like, it, it, it asks us for that. But if you realize, like the address that we're seeing here is actually the address that you can check here information, like in the apps, like you see this agent address, which is uh, the app in the DAO. Uh, but now this is the address that the Argon client is interpreting that it's the it's it's the account that is connected. Um, so now we're browsing Web3, and we can go to say compound finance, um, and the address that it will think that that we are is the or DAO. So this is this is a great thing about agent and smart accounts with, uh, with Frame, is that you can like really just use Web3 as you would uh, for anything, but you're now representing your DAO. Here we see the exact same thing. Uh, we're seeing zero x uh, zero eight, uh, which is the, the same the same that we have here. Uh, so we're now using anything that like like normal normal Web3, uh, but we're representing our organization. And for example. 
in order for Compound to start borrowing, uh, we need to sign a transaction, but we're going to be sending that transaction through the DAO. Uh, so I'm going to sign this transaction right now, um, and this is now, this should now create a home because I don't have this organization. If we come here and see the settings, uh, the, the important, important one is like who can execute actions as the agent. Who can tell the agent, okay, go now do this in Compound or go do that. Uh, and that address is voting, uh, which means that uh, for the thing that we talked about at, at the beginning, that only if there's a successful vote in the organization, we will do we will do anything. Um, so, um, as we can see now, there should have been a vote uh, if it got mined already. It got mined, and as we can see, there was a there was there's a vote to execute a run function. This is not great. We're working on fixing this. So here you should see like execute uh, enable borrowing on compound. Uh, but for now, we're, we're getting there. Um, and now it's very important that you we now have to switch back uh, because right now, like as far as the iron client is concerned, even though this is an update, uh, it thinks that we're a DAO. Um, so we need to go out of our DAO and go into our actual account uh, to to vote because like it's our account that is the it's, it's a token holder and not the DAO itself. So now we can just go ahead and vote. It tells us the beautiful description. This transaction will perform both JSON code zero. Um, sign. And then as soon as this, this vote passes, because I'm the only token holder, it will be executed immediately. Um, and what we'll do is compound here. It's like waiting for us to enable borrowing. Uh, but now, whenever this gets signed, uh, it will have enable uh, enable borrowing on compound because our DAO just performed this action. So your boat was kind of successfully, I voted with this, and then it's been enacted. Uh, so now on compound, you're not a ring QB, I'm pretty sure I'm a ring QB. Okay. I don't have any ETH, uh, so I cannot get any ETH uh, because I don't have ETH. Uh, but we need to come up with a way to transfer ETH from our account to the DAO. Let's see if my crypto fix this. Oh yeah, it fixed that. Oh no. Sometimes with my crypto, if you press enough times this button, it works. It's not not rock solid. These are like the tricks that if you if you work on this uh, regularly, you end up coming up with. Um, if my ether wallet works, wallet wise, we're going to take active measures. Okay, so I'm going to So another trick, um, if you ever find yourselves in a situation that you need to send ETH and you don't know how to do it, you can always open open the console on any website and you can just do a raw set transaction here. Uh, so we're going to send from our account to this from here. Also, if anyone has some Ricky Reef, they can send it here. Now.
So that's how you send ETH when no one wants you to send ETH. Okay, so now our agents would be receiving one ETH uh, from my HUD account, uh, which means that we can now go ahead and lend that ETH in the compound. Okay, so we now have one ETH. This is this ETH is like here in the like it's owned by the it's owned by the DAO by the DAO. Um, you see that we have. But if here and now we come to compound, we can see that we have that we have more power, and we can come here and we can be like, okay, uh, supply some ETH. We have like this amount of ETH, so we're gonna lend out 0 0.5 ETH uh, for compound, and this way, Tita will be able to earn interest on like the ETH that it just has on the vault. Um, just earn interest from that. Uh, you know, twice. Uh, and again, as we saw before, uh, we're gonna go need to go to the DAO and approve that 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 vote. Uh, whenever it comes up, this is for okay. This is ETH that is it belongs to the organization, so it should be approved by the by the by the owner that we actually do want to provide ETH uh, or compound. I'm gonna go yes again. And now, whenever this passes, uh, again, it should, this will tell us in Compound that uh, we've actually provided ETH, and now we're in interest on that, on that ETH. Uh, and this was, like, again, the DAO completely autonomously uh, just like, landing out ETH um, and not relying on third parties or, or like someone to control a, a wallet uh, to do that. So as you can see, we're now supplying super five ETH uh, that can be used as collateral, and now we can so uh, we throw it, and we should have earned some some interest on that on that ETH. Um, we use the right account. There we go. So now, just by borrowing, like someone has borrowed, or however a compound works, uh, but. Because someone borrowed that, that ETH, um, we now was, did, did, now, did have like, some ETH that it wasn't using, and we're now earned, uh, earned some ETH directly from the, from the DAO. At no point during this entire process, someone could have taken the, the DAO so if Here we, we actually have the redeem function, uh, we understand that, um, and then just go yes and go for it here. And transaction signed, and now we should receive more ETH than we that we that we got. Um, and if we go to finance, we don't spend a lot of a lot of this on us, but if we go to Etherscan, This has ETH. So I think this is a bag of ETH. Uh, but yeah, we, we have our ETH back, uh, and we just said uh, get it out and we got our ETH back uh, in just one transaction. Um, and now the, the question is uh, after we've demonstrated how how we can use a, a DAO to interact with code that wasn't meant to be used with DAO, uh, is like can we use this to, to govern the protocol? Compound protocol, uh, and the answer is, is yes. Uh, we have the we have the compound um, combo protocol. There's like a bunch of um, a bunch of functions that are very that are not not great. Um, they they allow this admin to do that, and we can use like in the same way that we've just used agent to provide ETH as collateral. We can use agent to make it the the entity that can upgrade these very, very dangerous protocol brands. Um, so, um, on live compound, um, I'm going to go for this. Um, on live compound, the addresses, uh, so this is how you, like, uh, 
this is this would be if Compound decided to do this, uh, and they're cool with having a DAO uh, that just has uh, all of of that. Um, you could just come here, see only first couple of these services are. Okay. So here, for example, it's a token which I currently said. Uh, to say, uh, Here and just search for compound. Uh, see if we can also go here and read the read the contract, uh, and we can see the no, we actually want to write the contract. Um, there's no writing. There's no writing. So you can see, for example, the mint uh, mint uh, mint function uh, that can be used for it by anyone. Uh, but this is the this is the very dangerous function. This is like this set controller, just the fancy way of saying controller. Um, but the, the idea of this function is that it can only be called by the can only be called by the by the owner of this of this contract because this is uh, this is like a very 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 dangerous function. If you take over that function, you, you change the controller, uh, you can you can basically steal everyone's money. Uh, so change the controller. This is like a, another lesson of sign. Please don't invent words. Use English or like Chinese. Like language, like people from language station know the language to read your code. Uh, so yeah, this is this is an issue. They have like this set controller function, and here they check whether message sender is an admin or not. Uh, if message sender is an admin, it returns an error in a very weird way that. Compound and only compound does, and it's a pain to interact with it. Um, and we can actually interact with this. Um, and yeah, that would, that would actually be fun. Uh, we could interact with it, and it will just return an error message, uh, which is like very bad. You should always always use revert and revert the entire transaction rather than like being okay and just like send a fail message. Um, but yeah, this, this function, uh, it can change the controller uh, of this contract. If someone, if you get to be, if you get this to be true, uh, that message sender equals admin, uh, this would be really, really bad. Uh, but the, but how easy it would be to control compound with an argon DAO. Now that we've, like, now that we've actually deployed, uh, we have a DAO that we can use it to get my new compound. Uh, if we go here and we see the first time the addresses that. This has interacted with, like as we can see, this is the ETH that we made uh, as profit for giving it out of compound. Uh, so if we see the internal transfers here, oh god, I hope this is verified. Yes. So we can see here this the ether contract, and this would have a new controller thing as well. Yeah. So we need to find. So if we call this function now, uh, we would be able to. Uh, to con govern the protocol, but it would be like as easy as for any protocol, like um, compound in particular. And this is going to be great because they don't do error, like they do error messages instead of reverting. So all the tooling in Ethereum will think that this this was fine. Uh, so we're just going to go here, set new controller, and we're going to say, okay, the new controller is going to be your DAO, and or like any address, um, and then you're you just need to click right, really, um, to add, to take out our notes, get this password here, enter the password, and then whoever controls this thing will be able to change it like this. Please connect it with the provider. So, label. Well, if if it is going to work, uh, you should you should be able uh, to just the like, govern the protocol, call like all of these uh, very important functions that they decided to uh, start with an underscore. Uh, you would be able to just control from here, and, like as the a DAO member in the compound DAO, you would just come here, enter one two, one two three four, and click right, um, and then if it is going to work uh, with with frame, 
uh, we would be able to just control the protocol with this. Uh, so you just need a DAO, uh, create a DAO with the template that you want. Uh, once you have your template set up, you get your agent address, you set it up here as an Aragon DAO, uh, and after you do that, you just can use whatever user interface to Ethereum. You could use Etherscan, if Etherscan works, or you can use a like, you can build a front end for already your protocol, like having like a little dashboard with all the params uh, and, and everything. Um, and that would be that would be how you would govern a protocol using everyone out of the box. Um, there are like other fun things that I would love to do with this, uh, such as in the case of compound, I think governance is great, but it's it's a bit dangerous that if this is a DAO and there's an attack, you want to give people the opportunity to uh, basically, give them a warning that something's going to happen. Um, so, like, you need to add a delay uh, for bot execution, and that's something that we could build. I don't have time. We don't have time for building that today. Uh, but kind of the the idea is, um, what you would do is instead of executing going from boating to agent directly, you would go through another delay app uh, that sits in the middle between boating and and the agent. And that would be as easy. You would need to write another template, but that's that's kind of it. Uh, I would love to have time for that. I'm going into that. We'll go into live coding, and I'm, I'm going a little bit late. Um, but yeah, we we did this. Uh, this is really really easy. You can see how you can use any protocol in Ethereum uh, with a DAO. And if you want to change the template, it's as easy as like going to our default templates, figuring out what permission you would like. Uh, what you want to do and change any permissions and that's it. And added another app is, as well. Super, super simple. And this is the part that I really would have loved to have time for, but I'm not going to finish because we need to do some live coding. Uh, so we're, I'm, I'm going to publish like, some some notes uh, on how, how to do that. Uh, so if you want to continue at home with that, uh, you can do that, but uh, there's no time for, for live coding today. So yeah, um, this is kind of like our question, uh, what, would, what would you build? Uh, we have this fantastic developer documentation website uh, called hack.org uh, that it's, it, it has, the, it explains anything that you might want to know about uh, being an Argo developer. Uh, it has like a documentation on Argo PA, which is our package manager, Argo OS, that is the operating system for the for smart contracts, Argo API, which is what you use to build the front end. Our own UI that is like this beautiful uh, UI kit uh, that you can use in your React apps so that they look as great without having to do any like very little work. Or the Argon CLI, which we didn't have time to go into that either. Or the Argon design system that we just released as well. And it's kind of like the design guidelines for how to build Argon apps. Um, and this is all here in, in hack.argon.org or the Argon developer portal. They even put a picture of me here, I don't know why, but this is for you, developer. Uh, you can use this to build like anything set from like different DAO templates to like DApps or crypto protocol that you can build on top of Argon OS. There's a bunch of people that are using this already. This is like a little bit outdated, I should update this. Uh, but yeah, there's like here you can get all of the information, you can get like all the reference documentation for anything if you want to start contributing to a project. Uh, everything's really here in hack.org. Uh, there's also this really nice guide uh, that this is what I, I wanted to do, but this is like a little bit long, uh, for how to create your first Argon app. So you see like all of these all of these apps here. Uh, they're actually like totally isolated apps. Uh, they run on inside of an iframe. So they, they don't, and even the default apps, uh, they don't have any any special, any special permissions. They're just like apps as you could build uh, on top of Argon. Uh, so all the apps are fairly independent. And here you have a guide for how to build your own app and building here a governance process, uh, an integration with a protocol, uh, or anything really. Um, and we use the we, we use the same tools that we explain here. We use them for building um, our own stuff. There's also in the Argon one blog. I forgot about adding this. Uh, there's this super long tutorial, this series, tutorial series uh, called My First Argon App. Uh, but this is uh, a really in-depth tutorial. Uh, this is like the first one 
Uh, and there's like four parts that came out already uh, here. Blog, blog development one, and here this goes in depth on how to. Here we tackle the problem of building an actual governance process on top of Argon. Uh, so this is holographic consensus, which is like DAO stacks uh, feature. Like that's what they do. Uh, and then Ale from our team, he built a like, holographic consensus on Argon in a week, and then he did this. He's doing this amazing tutorial series on, okay, there's like these nice tutorials that we have on how do you build basic Argon apps. And this is like, if you want to build an Argon app that is as complex as it gets, uh, this is everything that he had to do. And he explains it in a, in a really, really good way. Um, so Ale is the person that helped me with this, uh, with this workshop as well. Um, so yeah, we have like this tutorial series. If you want to get like deep down on how to, how to build like proper Argon apps, this is what you have to do. This would take me like probably six to eight hours to go over like all the details, but Ali does a really good work, uh, like explaining where you have to put your attention uh, in order to build like astonishing Um uh, So this is this really good. It, it will take you some time to get to get through it, uh, the tutorial, but it goes from like explaining the holographic consensus protocol to like building the Argon app contracts to building the UI. So it's like a very very complete, uh, very very complete tutorial. So definitely check out um, Hagadar on the door. Uh, that's where all the documentation is. Um, and yeah, I'm like, super excited to see what you build. Uh, please, if you build something after this workshop or you have questions, like, please just let me know. I will be around for the rest of the day. And these are like our social uh, social Twitter things. Uh, and then we also have a chat called our the chat, uh, which is where we work community chats. And we have a specific channel called Dev Dev Hope. Uh, that this is where SDK people uh, hang out and help people that have questions or have ideas. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna try to pronounce it in Chinese, but thank you very much. Uh, and if you have any questions, I will be happy to address them. Yeah, thank you so much. 